folks, this is a, a live Oklahoma weather alert. Uh, we're back here with you again, continuing to track severe weather that is uh, primarily just out in western and northwestern Oklahoma. And again, we continue with uh, one tornado worn storm just north and now east of the Shattuck area up in far northwestern Oklahoma. And then we continue to deal with additional supercells uh, in west central Oklahoma as well. We continue to watch southern Oklahoma for possible development. Again, the red dots with the names, those are our storm trackers, again, fanned out around Oklahoma. And again, we'll continue to check in with them again as we uh, really go through the evening. But I want to zoom in here uh, to northwestern Oklahoma, first of all. And as we do that, this is our lone tornado warned storm. Now, this storm did produce a brief tornado north of Shattuck. And again, there has been a little bit of debris, maybe a little bit of damage with this, again, three miles north of the uh, of the uh, Shattuck area. Uh, now again, tornado warning continues here. The storm has weakened some, uh, but the storm's still quite strong. Now the area of spin has also come down some, but we continue to track this carefully. Uh, again, for our friends there in Shattuck, Fargo, all the way back far as uh, as far north rather as uh, the Fort Supply area. The area of spin again not looking quite as impressive as it did uh, 10 to 15 minutes ago, but this is still a broad area of spin here, and the broad area of spin now is just to the north and just to the east of the Ashatic area. I also want to go further down to the south. This storm around the Cheyenne area, this has also come back up in intensity fairly quickly uh, just over the last five minutes or so. Uh, that's where we also have one of our storm tra uh, trackers, Kathy Rebick. We'll be talking with her momentarily. But even this last sweep that just came in, you see that black hail core really redeveloping there now. And also there's an area of spin with this storm as well. Keep in mind the overall tornado threat's low today, but just like we saw with the other supercell to the north, we've had a couple what we call hopscotch tornadoes brief spin-ups. And again, that's happened in the Texas Panhandle, now also in Ellis County as well. And th there's actually even here on the spin rate, just east of Cheyenne um, and tracking over towards the Herring area. Kathy, you're looking at this cell here. Give us an update from what you're seeing there in Roger Mills County. Yeah, it's really trying to intensify here. From your vantage point, are you able to see, again, from your vantage point, are you able to see, uh, you know, at least as you're kind of assessing the base of the storm? Again, not to alarm anyone, but again, this, the spin has increased just some with this cell. And again, we, it had a wall cloud with it uh, maybe 30 minutes ago as it was moving across the Oklahoma-Texas border. And it looks like as the storm has cycled, like you said, it was breathing out. It's what we call outflow dominant. Uh, it's now starting to breathe back in. In fact, it even has a well-pronounced inflow notch now redeveloping where it's breathing some warmer air back in. Uh, the area spin, the hell core itself is also getting bigger. But again, from your vantage point, I, I know you're just a little bit to the east of it. You're letting the storm approach you, which of course is good. Uh, uh, but what are you seeing, again, from your vantage point as far as the structure and, again, anything on the lower parts of the storm? I know there's more haze today. The humidity is a little bit higher. Uh, but, again, just the structure of the storm, what are you seeing there? Uh, as far as any rotation goes, we're not seeing that as of yet. No signs of, of rotation. But as we as we look up, we can see the, the top of the mezzo. The, it, the clouds are still very high, which indicates that there's still a substantial hail threat with the storm well. Okay, okay, so what we're going to continue to track that one there carefully. Also watching this one still out in the Texas Panhandle out around Shamrock. That's coming up I-40. That one was strong earlier. It's really weakened. Kathy, I tell you, this storm, we've really got to keep our eyes. This storm has rapidly intensified uh, just south of Strong City. And so just make sure you're in the right position there uh, to really keep your eyes on it. You folks in Moorwood and Hammond, this is a big heads up, even Herring, Strong City heads up. This is, if nothing else, a really big hail storm, uh, really big hail. Look at that hail core, how it's gone from essentially, you know, we were talking maybe about half dollars uh, five minutes ago to now back to reds, pinks, and a large area of white and gray. And that's giving us a strong indication of ping pong that may be trying to go to tennis ball size hail. So the mesocyclone within the storm, it's really intensified now just within the last five to 10 minutes. So this had rapid intensification. We need to keep our eye on that. We've got Kathy's video coming in on that. Kathy, if anything changes there, let me know. This is where we have the tornado warning currently. 
And again, this is up here in northwestern Oklahoma. So we're moving from west central to northwestern Oklahoma, up here around the Shattuck, Gage, Fargo, and again, really as far north as Fort Supply area. Supercell here as well. And again, hail core still pretty pronounced. Some pinks, some blacks you're seeing there. Uh, but again, the hail core has come down some. I think the mesocyclone itself has also eased down some. It's kind of breathing out a little bit right now. Uh, but again, right now, officially, we do continue with that tornado warning um, that is in effect for uh, for this cell here. And so again, as we're just looking at this carefully, again, you can even see kind of down here just north of Gage, and that's where the uh, inflow notch is on this storm. So it continues to breathe in uh, some new life. And again, that's an area of spin still fairly predominant with this storm. This has been this has been a long life mesocyclone. It's been sen uh, spinning since it formed out in the Texas Panhandle. And again, this is the one cell that has produced, again, some hopscotch intermittent tornadic activity, cone-shaped funnel cloud and tornadic activity. Again, one of them north of Shattuck, three miles north of Shattuck, again, with some debris and some damage there, unfortunately, north of the uh, Shattuck area. So we've got to keep our eyes on that one. Uh, again, tornado warning continues there. Shattuck, Gage, Fargo, as far north as Fort Supply. Uh, again, immediate tornado precautions, again, in that area. And then as we go back down to the south, I want to take another look at this one. This is the one that's come up really quick. Uh, it was a fairly strong storm. It did have a wall cloud with it at one point. It then really began to weaken. It kind of elongated. It began to breathe out and cycle down. Uh, but now all indications are here it's cycling back up. Um, let's go ahead and switch back over to the Hellcore tracker here. And again, this is a monster hail course. So again, just south of Strong City, uh, north of the Herring area, and that's going to be approaching there, uh, Highway 33, and eventually that's going to be approaching the Moorwood, potentially even the Hammond area. Again, if you live in those areas, uh, this is a big heads up for you. This hail will do some damage. Uh, we're talking about ping pong plus ball size hail. Again, could be as large as tennis balls. Uh, the latest sweep, it's, it's easing down some. So again, we had the big hail core come up, the mesocyclone came up, and again, which did increase the hail size. Now it's beginning to kind of breathe out and ease back down uh, just some. But again, Kathy, you're still looking at it. We're looking at your video. Again, it's a little hazy. It's a little bit harder to see today because of the uh, increasing humidity out there, but you still you're still our eyes in the field on this storm. Go ahead and give us an update. Uh, yeah, well, like you said, the humidity is uh, incredibly high out here. Um, we've got still um, the increasing uh, meso here as we're, as we're looking at the clouds are getting higher. So we've got that hail core that is still building, uh, like you said, south of Strong City. Um, we're, we're not seeing any indication of any rotation, but we're still keeping an eye on it because the storm is clearly uh, far from over. It's uh, moving into the Hammond area here in about the next 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we're going to go and reissue that tornado warning there, uh, the National Weather Services for Ellis County until 6 p.m. So again, brand new tornado warning for Ellis County until 6 p.m. And again, there's been some intermittent tornadic activity. Uh, this storm is at least produced uh, at least produced, uh, by my count, three to possibly four uh, tornadoes. Again, as we've uh, gone through the evening, most of those being out in the Texas Panhandle, but again, we did have at least one north of Shattuck. And again, that was uh, about 30 minutes ago or so now. Uh, but again, brand new tornado warning, again, just being reissued here. And again, that's going to be north of Shattuck. Uh, and that's going to extend essentially, uh, it's almost the exact same coverage area. Uh, the new tornado warning is going to be from Shattuck back over through Fort Supply and the uh, Fargo area. Let me go and pop that up here visually uh, for you folks. But again, this is the brand new tornado warning there. And you can see it's almost, almost identical to the other tornado warning. But again, that's going to be between Shattuck, Fargo, Fort Supply, again, talking about Ellis County. Again, that's the brand new tornado warning there. And again, that's going to be until 6 p.m. Uh, so we continue to track it. There's still an opportunity, uh, again, for some tornadic activity. And again, we've already had at least, uh, at least some brief tornadic activity three miles north of Shattuck, again, with at least some, uh, some debris and possibly even some damage uh, being reported there. So again, as we look inside the storm, you can almost see two distinct areas of spin here. And so when we're talking about areas of spin, we're talking about where the reds and the greens come together. And again, we have one area of spin here. This is primarily what's the new area of spin, kind of the new mesocyclone, if you will. And this is the old one. This is the one that produced at least some brief tornadic activity, again, just north of Shattuck. Uh, as this kind of fizzles out and wanes down, it looks like we have a new area of spin kind of redeveloping there right behind it, right there towards Highway 283. But again, brand new tornado warning here. Again, it's essentially the same area. Uh, again, it's just being extended now uh, until 6 p.m. So we're tracking that in Ellis County. Tornado warning there. 
And then again, I also want to go back down here to our other cell down here in Roger Mills County. Again, that's going to be just east of the Cheyenne area. Moving through Strong City and Herring. Uh, Kathy, what do you have on this storm? Again, we're looking at your video coming in on that. Uh, this is still a strong storm. The mesocyclone came up some on this. Uh, the hail core definitely came up on this. Hail core now essentially right over Highway 33, just east of Strong City. Um, right now, the area of spin on this one coming down, but still, this is still a fairly pronounced those. We're looking just at the base velocities within this cell. Again, we're seeing these reds and greens right here. This is the area of spin right here. This is the area of spin right here. So not saying there's any type of tornadic or immediate tornadic uh, potential with this, uh, but these areas spin, they will maximize the hail core, and that's why the hail core is sitting exactly over that same area. Uh, but on a day like today, we still need to watch for those brief spin-ups as well. And again, you can see there's the hail core right there where that area of spin is. So Kathy, we're looking at your video. You're on the live line. Go and give us an update from your uh, vantage point there as well. Yeah, well, we're still we're still south of Butler, uh, looking west at the cell. Um, like you said, it does show some rotation uh, on radar. Um, I'm not seeing any signs of wall clouds or funnel clouds, um, but the the hail core is definitely growing. Um, we're looking at the south side of the cell right now, so if there's any indication of any sort of wall cloud or funnel cloud, we will catch it. Okay, sounds good. And again, we're looking at uh, your video live right there as well. So again, doing a great job. Again, Mike Russ also uh, just north of there. Severe thunderstorm warning for those for that specific cell Kathy's on is being extended uh, further to the east. Now that's going to include uh, Roger Mills, uh, Custer and Dewey County, and that will be now until 615 this evening. So again, severe storms there in west central Oklahoma. So again, you can see those uh, Cheyenne, Hammond, Big hail possible there. Again, a golf ball plus size hail quite possible. And again, those are now kind of coming in range of where Kathy is. So Kathy, keep your eyes on that. And again, let us know again if there's any change with that. Again, still tracking this storm that's tornado warned uh, as well. And again, this is still just north of the uh, Shattuck area. And uh, Shattuck, Gage, Fargo, Fort Supply. Again, we're seeing the pinks and uh, even some of the blacks showing up there. Uh, again, tornado warning continues there. And uh, with this uh, until, uh, until 6 p.m. now. Weather service just now extending that warning. And again, the hail core still looking fairly evident on, on this uh, specific cell as well, uh, just north of the gauge area. In fact, the hail core now, it's going to be approaching the Highway 270 area. But I can tell you, even though the hail core with the old mesocyclone continues to lift to the north there, we've got a new area of spin. And I believe this is why the warning was reissued. The new area of spin is still back down to the south. So eventually, essentially, um, this storm where the old tornado warning is, there's a new tornado warning exactly almost in its exact same place. Uh, this is the old tornado warning here, new tornado warning in this new area of spin, again, coming up there closer to Highway 283. So again, it goes without saying, we've been saying it now for almost the last 30 minutes, but again, if you live from Shattuck to May to Fort Supply to Gage to Fargo, again, and everywhere in between that general area, you need to be taking your immediate tornado precautions. Again, we've been saying this now, I understand, for 30 minutes, but if for some reason you're just now joining us, just now getting the information, you have friends, family, loved ones who live in that area, you know, make sure you're calling, texting them, making sure they have that information, and again, that they're also in their safe place as well. Uh, but again, that's where the current tornado warning is. And again, this storm has at least produced one tornado in Oklahoma. It was three miles north of Shattuck, and it's potentially produced three, fairly brief, but three tornadoes out in the Texas Panhandle. So again, you call that a hopscotch tornado. It goes down, it lifts, and then it puts another one back down. And again, the storm just continues to essentially cycle uh, like that. Uh, so as we go back to the hail core tracker and, and reflectivity here, you can see the storm, it's coming back up in intensity. And so you folks there in Fort Supply, and, and these are what you call cyclic supercells, they'll cycle, they'll cycle over and over uh, until finally they, they begin to wear down at the end of their life cycle. But again, they'll come up in intensity, they'll go down, they'll come up and go down. But this one's really come back up now. And uh, you know, I tell you, you folks there in Fort Supply, the rotation is still to your south, but you've got a big hail core coming up there in the Fort uh, Supply area. And so again, that right there is going to be Highway 270 from May back over to Fort Supply, right there where it tees off with Highway 183. 183 and 270 right there at the T and just to the west 
back towards May, there's a big hail core coming through there. So again, you folks, heads up on that. Uh, there could easily be some near ping pong ball size hail uh, with that. Now we've got our other storm tracker, Mike Russ. He's approaching the Arnett area, and he'll be able to kind of look at the back end of this storm. And that's where the area of spin is. And the area of spin is still in the back end of that storm. And so again, we'll be checking back in with him and again, talking with him uh, again, coming up momentarily. Let me go and zoom this out. So we're talking about the tornado warn storm there. Here's our other storm that continues to cycle now just northeast of Cheyenne. And this storm is really coming back up in intensity here as well. Kathy, we're looking at your video here. Uh, let's go and take another look at this. And I tell you what, Kathy, the area of spin, this is the strongest it's been. Um, I, I tell you what, just south of Highway 33, uh, between Strong City and Herring, uh, this has really come up fast. Kathy, do you have a good visual on this storm? I'm telling you, just south of Highway 33, uh, the area of spin has come up uh, fairly quickly over the last five minutes. What do you have out there in the field? Uh, well, uh, yeah, we're still looking west at the cell. Um, it's We're now in the new severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, this has been extended until 615 for this area. Um, again, south of Butler, uh, the storm is moving northeast. It's getting into the Hammond area now. Um, it's, rotation is increasing on the radar. So far, there's no signs of a wall cloud on the ground, but we are keeping our eyes on it. Okay, we're, we're watching this one carefully from here, I can tell you that, Kathy. This one has really got my attention, just north of Herring. And of course, we never want to alarm anybody. We're just analyzing what we're seeing on radar minute by minute, second by second here. Uh, but this is one we got to really keep our eyes on. Kathy, you may need to think about repositioning a little bit just to get a better vantage point on this one. If you're still back there towards Butler, you may need to get back up towards uh, Highway 33 and because uh, it should be lifting just northeast of the Hammond area. And so if you're back on 33, you know, kind of approach Hammond, you don't need to come into town, uh, but that way you have a good visual of this one uh, because I can tell you there, there's definitely some spin and this is one that again is cycled up and down. I tell you, just north of the Herring area, you folks there in Moorwood and Hammond, stay alert to this. Highway 33 all the way back over through Highway 34 and uh, right there at the junction from Hammond to the north. Stay alert to this storm. Uh, number one, it's producing some big hail, but the, and look at that hail core tracker there now. Reds, purples, whites, grays. Uh, there's no additional colors past that. So this could easily be going to near tennis ball size hail. Kathy, if possible, I would try and get a little bit further to the west on this one. Um, again, just the, the latest sweep coming in here, uh, looking fairly impressive. So we're tracking that. And again, that's gonna be there in far eastern Roger Mills County. I wanna go further down to the south here. There is a new severe thunderstorm warning here for Beckham County, and this is going to be for Texola and the Eric area, and this is for this storm coming out of the Texas Panhandle. Let's look at um, the uh, hail core tracker on this one as well. And again, there's an opportunity even on this cell here again for at least some golf balls. So, okay, we, we got a tornado warning now, Kathy, on that one. So that will go tornado warned. It looks like this is going to try and produce tornadic activity. And again, we're talking about this cell. You need to get uh, to the west, Kathy, on 33, get closer to Hammond. And again, this is going to be a new tornado warning here. Uh, it's going to be just north of the Herring area, but this is going to be for Custer and Roger Mills County until 615. So again, this is going to be a brand new tornado warning, Kathy. You're right there in the area. You just need to get a little bit further back to the west. But yes, this will be a brand new tornado warning. We saw this one happening here in the forecast center. Uh, I had almost locked onto it just north of Herring. Uh, we saw that one quickly developing. That's going to be tracking, folks. That's going to be tracking back up here towards Highway 33. That's going to be tracking back up here towards Highway 34 in the Moorwood area. So Herring, Hammond, and Moorwood, you folks need to be taking your immediate tornado precautions. Th this most likely is on the ground. This is going to be just south of 33. And Kathy, you're on Highway 33 now. Is that correct? correct? Uh, Will, we're heading north right now. We're about a half mile away from Highway 33 where we'll be heading west. Okay. Um, and we should have a good visual on it. Got it. As soon as you get to 33, let me know. You'll turn west and you'll be tracking towards Hammond. So you're right there in the perfect spot for it. But I tell you what, folks, Herring, Hammond, Moorwood, you folks need to be taking your immediate tornado precautions. Uh, we've been watching this one cycle back and forth here. And again, even as we go back to uh, the velocities within the storm, this is what we're looking at specifically. We saw this one happen in real time. Kathy's got the visual on it there. She's at least monitoring it, eyeballing it. Uh, but where you're seeing the bright greens and the reds coming together, this is the couplet. And again, you see this coming together. We saw this happen in real time. This is Highway 33. This is Highway 34. Again, there's the junction. There's Moorwood. So again, you folks up here in Moorwood, this is a real heads up for you. There's Hammond. So from Hammond all the way up through Moorwood, even Herring, 
The area of spin, it's going to be one mile north of Herring. The area of spin is one mile north of Herring. There's Highway 33. It's approaching 33 right now. There's Kathy coming up there on the east side of it. Uh, she's heading north. She'll be turning back to the west here momentarily, and we'll be getting uh, hopefully a little bit more of a visual. Kathy, let me know. Have you already made the turn now to head back to the west there? Uh, we're just now getting into the town of Butler right now. Um, we're about to turn west on Highway 33. Okay, so and again, I just want to reiterate this one more time. This is a fairly intense area of spin now, and we don't want to take this one lightly. And so we're not saying it's on the ground, and we're not saying it's intensity, but we're saying there is definitely an opportunity for tornadic activity here. So again, Highway 33, Highway 34, Hammond Moorwood, as, and even Herring, the, the area spin is going to be just north of you. It's going to be just east of Strong City. If I'm in Strong City, you can go and err on the side of caution and take your tornado precautions. But the immediate impact right now, it's going to be Hammond, it's going to be Moorwood, and it's going to be just north of the Herring area. Again, folks, you need to be taking your immediate tornado precautions there. And we'll continue to check in with Kathy's video. She's going through the town of Butler right now. And again, she's going to be approaching Hammond here fairly quickly. So, Kathy, it looks like you've turned east. You're kind of eyeballing it. You're still a little bit of a distance there, but go and give me an update from your vantage point on this storm. Uh, Will, we're starting to, to really see some of that frequent lightning as we're, we're getting close to the cell. Uh, so far, we're not seeing a wall cloud, but uh, the, the tornado warning is, is still showing up on radar. We are, are still following that very closely. Okay, as soon as you get just a little bit closer, let me know. And uh, like I said, we're going to stick with your video here. We're going to continue to watch it. But again, Kathy coming in there from Butler, it's pretty hazy today. There's a lot of humidity. It makes it a little bit harder to see on a day like today. So again, that's what we're dealing with here. Uh, but again, on radar, this is a fairly strong indication on radar that, uh, that again, uh, th there is at least the potential here, again, for tornadic activity. And again, we've already had at least one tornado in Oklahoma. It was up north of the Shattuck area, about three miles north of Shattuck. Uh, but again, I just want to underscore one more time, Hammond, Moorwood, you folks in those areas, you need to be taking your immediate tornado precautions. We continue to monitor the storm north of Shattuck and east of Shattuck now with the tornado warning there as well. Uh, but right now, uh, and that did produce a tornado earlier, three miles north of Shattuck, tornado warning continues there. We're tracking that. But right now, uh, in my opinion, this storm here uh, in eastern Roger Mills County, this has at least the, the immediate potential to be, if not currently, producing tornadic activity. If it was producing tornadic activity with the spin rate product here, it would be crossing Highway 33 right now. Again, if there is actually anything on the ground, there's the couplet, bright greens and reds. It's crossing Highway 33. It's tracking right up towards Moorwood. You folks in Moorwood, you have friends, family, loved ones in Moorwood. You need to be calling, texting them, letting them know they are under a tornado warning. And again, they need to be taking those uh, tornado precautions immediately. Uh, on down the road, again, eventually Leedy and Ray, uh, those hometowns, heads up at least right now. You don't need to be taking your immediate tornado precautions there, but at least paying extra special attention to this storm. Again, as it's turning just a little bit more northerly now. Uh, but again, you can see with the spin rate product that uh, this storm at least has a good indication that it's trying to produce something right now. Kathy, you're getting a little bit closer there. I know you're on Highway 33. You may be coming into Hammond. Uh, it's pretty hazy. We're looking at your video, but give us an update. Uh, well, we're starting to see those lower clouds now. Again, there's not a wall cloud. Um, definitely very, very dark. Um, like you said, it's very hazy. So if there is one on the ground, if you're in like east of Strong City, it will be incredibly hard to see. So you need to just take your tornado precautions right now. Um, but again, we're not seeing a wall cloud. We're not seeing a fallen cloud as of yet, but we're just now entering the Hammond area. So we should be, if there is one, we'll be seeing it uh, just just off to our west here very shortly. Yes, if you're if you're entering the Hammond area right now, Kathy, this is what you need to do. You need to turn to the north on Highway 34, but once you get into Hammond, point, if you can, point your camera there off to the northwest. The area of spin, it's going to be just northwest of Hammond. It's going to be just northwest of Hammond. That's where the area of spin is. And so we're looking at this carefully. And so this is, again, tracking back up towards the Moorwood area. But again, you folks in Hammond, you've got to be taking your immediate tornado precautions right now as well. Uh, you folks in Hammond have to be taking the immediate tornado precautions. Uh, we're looking at Kathy's video. And again, as this continues to come in, but this is a tornado warning here that we're dealing with. Currently, two tornado warnings in Oklahoma, another tornado warning up in northern Ellis County. Uh, right now, indications are that is not necessarily producing tornadic activity right now. 
but this storm here in eastern Roger Mills County, uh, it's easing back some. It's breathing out a little bit right now, and so the, the area of spin, it's easing down just some, but we saw this come up fairly quickly, and as we were watching the storm, as it kind of looked like it was diminishing earlier, maybe 30 minutes ago, but we saw the hail core within about five minutes rapidly come back up, and as that happens, when the hail core comes back up, it shows you that the storm is intensifying. It has to do with the mesocyclone. The health of the storm was intensifying, and again, we saw that to area spin also coming back up. We said, hey, we need to start watching this, Kathy. Really put your eyeballs on it. And before we knew it, the Weather Service already had a tornado warning issued on it. Hill size is coming down just a little bit now. The storm easing down a little bit. That does not take away from the immediate tornado threat. But in real time, just as we're analyzing this on radar, the storm is breathing out just a little bit. The area of spin coming down just a little bit. And the hail size is getting just slightly smaller. But again, we're going to continue to track this. Kathy, uh, again, you're still right there in the area. You're going through the Hammond area right now. Again, tell us what you're seeing and give us an update. Hi, Will. We're getting into the Hammond area right now. Um, as, as you can see on the on the video, we are see, starting to see that low rain. Um, we are actually seeing the wall cloud off to our right. We're going to get a visual for you here in about two seconds when we can get to a road. But there is a definite wall cloud now just off to our northwest. Any type of lowering with that wall cloud at all? Were you able to make any kind of visual with that? Uh, we're not seeing a funnel cloud as of yet, but like I said, it's a, it's a very raggedy wall cloud, but it, it is definitely showing some signs of some strong rotation right now. I'm not seeing any um, debris to indicate that it's made any contact with the ground, but it is a very well-defined wall cloud. Folks, well, let me tell you this, especially in the Moorwood area, this is now, it's, it's turning more northeast towards Moorwood, and I can tell you it's cycled down for about two sweeps, but there's the hill core beginning to come back up. Again, you see the hail core now beginning to come back up, and it looks like this is trying to re-intensify now uh, here as well. So it looks like the area of spin cap, the end, and okay, so now we're getting a visual on it. We've got to watch this in real time because it did breathe out a little bit. The area of spin came down just some, uh, but here on radar, it looks like it's trying to cycle back up. Uh, so we're seeing some scud clouds. We're seeing some motion here. And as Kathy's kind of centering this shot up here just a little bit, and that right there, that should be a fairly decent shot, Kathy. We're able to see kind of the backside and the underneath of it. So Kathy's video will be in and out a little bit here. Keep in mind, she's pretty rural. Um, so it looks like it maybe is just kind of looping back through there. So we'll see about her video if we need to do anything there. But Kathy, as you continue to look at this, again, give us a play-by-play -play from out there in the field. So I'm seeing some scud clouds, some motion into the storm. That's the inflow. There's the inflow notch right there. That's where the storm is feeding in. There's the inflow coming into the storm, big hail up in here, and this is where the air of spin is, right back in here. But Kathy, go and give us an update. Hi, Will. Uh, we're getting a little closer to the cell right now. Uh, we're still seeing that wall cloud now right off to our northwest. Um, as you can see on, on the video, uh, we have the hail core directly in front of us, that odd green color that indicates that there's still some very heavy hail associated with this storm. Um, but as far as the wall cloud goes, we're getting a visual here for you in about two seconds. Um, we're not seeing a funnel yet, but we are seeing that low rain that's uh, pretty substantial as of right now, Will. Okay, okay, let's just kind of keep our eyes on it. And so again, we just want to keep reiterating, and for our friends there in Moorwood, it's a fairly small hometown, but again, uh, this area of spin, this area of circulation, uh, it's essentially going to go, if not right through, very close to the Moorwood area. And it's going to be crossing there, Highway 34, fairly quickly. You folks there in Hammond also heads up. You need to be taking your immediate tornado precautions. And again, if I'm in Leedy or Ray, I'm also paying extra special attention to this storm. If I'm in Butler, I'm also paying extra special attention to this storm here as well. Officially, you're not in the warning, uh, but again, this is moving in your general area. Uh, so again, this is a big heads up. Again, tornado warning here. And so again, we've got a visual on it from Kathy. She has not had a confirmed, uh, even a confirmed lowering. Uh, but again, Kathy, as you continue to look at this, and we'll go back over here to velocities here. Uh, the couplet, it's it's not as defined, so this continues to cycle. And again, what that what when we when we say cycle, that means the level, the intensity of the storm goes up and it goes down. It goes up and it goes down. This is called a cyclic supercell. They cycle up and down. And so now looking at velocities here, it's not looking as organized as when we initially identified this maybe 10 minutes ago. It's looking a little bit broader now. The area of spin talking about the reds and greens are kind of fanning out here. So it's looking a little bit broader. Uh, but again, you can see just with the new sweep coming back in, at least the inflow coming into the storm is increasing. This may be trying to cycle back up, Kathy. Uh, the inflow, the inbound wind 
is now beginning to increase back into the mesocyclone. The hill sizes should be coming back up here over the next five minutes as well, and we'll see if that means anything for the actual mesocyclone. Uh, regardless, though, and there's the hill sizes already beginning to come back up, the blacks and the whites uh, beginning to show back up here on radar, where again the hill, and wow, okay, so there's the hill core. Uh, th this is a large hill core. So even outside of the tornado threat, this is da very large damaging hill. If you live between Hammond and Moorwood along Highway 34, even again, you know, there, there's even if you're outside of those hometowns, there's farms, there's ranches, there's, there's homes, there's other things going on there between Hammond and Moorwood on Highway 34. Um, this could be tennis ball size hill moving through your area. So this is the Hellcore product. It's white, it's gray, there's no additional colors, and it's not a small area. This is a large area of potentially damaging hell. So we just wanna be real clear about that. Yes, we're talking about a tornado warning, but the other thing we're talking about that has a larger geographical impact here, it is the hail. And again, we're talking about possibly some tennis ball size hail, and that's gonna be approaching quickly now, the Highway 34 corridor between Hammond and Moorwood. Kathy, we're looking at your video. We're seeing a lot of scud cloud associated uh, with this storm but again go and give us another update uh, with what you're seeing again as far as uh, at least the tornado potential in the area of spin associated with this storm hi well we're still sitting here out on a uh, highway 34 um, we're still, look, still looking at that area of location um, we're not seeing a lower end right now the hail core is pretty pretty close um, we're, it still has that, that ominous kind of green color, which shows there's still a lot of hail with the system. Um, but again, we're not seeing that definite uh, wall cloud that, like we were before. The rotations kind of dwindled a little bit on radar, but it, we're still under that tornado warning wheel. Really appreciate that to update there. So, I mean, Kathy, you, your, your eyes are on it, so we're going to continue to monitor this with you uh, here. But again, you can actually see, uh, again, you're even seeing some of the cloud of ground lightning, so definitely, obviously, be careful. Lightning safety as well. Uh, but again, this is this is an ominous supercell. This is large hail number one, and it also does have a tornado threat number two with it, again, with the tornado warning continuing. Um, our other storm up here to the north with the tornado warning, it's really, and, and the only reason we're not necessarily uh, talking about it, it, it's really weakening. So officially a tornado warning continues up here. There is not necessarily a defined area of spin, but officially a tornado warning does continue between Shattuck, Fargo, and Fort Supply. If you're in those areas, stay alert to fast changing weather. Uh, there's a broad mesocyclone up there still, but there's not a defined area of spin up in that area. So we're gonna continue to monitor that. It's a completely different situation though. It's completely different down here between Hammond and Moorwood. And we're talking about essentially Eastern Roger Mills County, uh, all the way back over here through portions of Custer County. Tornado warning in effect here. You need to be taking your immediate tornado precautions. Kathy, I don't know if you can get us another picture uh, of the wall cloud. Kathy, you're right there. So we're gonna try and keep your video centered up. You may be going a little bit further to the north, but again, just give us an update. Tell us what's going on out there. Uh, we're really kind of relying on your eyes and your expertise out there in the field. Yeah, well, uh, we're heading back east of Highway 34, uh, away from that hill, uh, coming down pretty much right from the highway right now. Um, we're still seeing that weak rotation on radar. We're not seeing, again, any sign of uh, definitive clouds, funnels, or anything like that, but we are still seeing that um, extreme hail threat right now associated with the storm. Yeah, and we're, we're looking at it from here, Kathy. This area of spin, it's still going to be crossing right up towards Highway 34, and it's going to be, if it doesn't go through Moorwood, just south of Moorwood. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of haze, and it may be just a little bit hidden up there on you, uh, but this is a tornado warning. We just want to be real clear about this. Uh, there, there are strong indications here, at least twice in the forecast center, that this may have produced at least a brief hopscotch-type tornado. And so we've got the big hail. We've been talking about the big hail. There's the hail core, and, again, that's going to be tracking right through the Moorwood area. So again, you folks there in Moorwood, we just can't underscore enough that again, you need to be staying away from windows. Um, and again, obviously taking your tornado precautions, but the other thing, you need to make sure you are secure from the hail threat here as well. Secure from the hail threat here as well. This is large damaging hail, again, even outside of the uh, tornado threat uh, that we're dealing with on this cell as well. But again, just to underscore again, this is a tornado warning. Far eastern portions of Roger Mills, far western portions of Custer County, and this is essentially for Hammond, Moorwood. It's going to stay just east, uh, just west, rather, of the Butler area. But again, the immediate hometowns being impacted, Hammond, Moorwood, and again, the Highway 34 corridor. The area of spin, it's now north of the Highway 33 corridor. Kathy, as soon as you can, let's get turned back around so we can get a shot of this storm. As soon as you get a, a chance there, let's go and get turned around so we can get a shot of this storm. I want to quickly zoom out here 
and I want to go back down to the south. Uh, you folks down here around Eric, this is also a severe storm. Uh, again, nowhere near at the level of what we're dealing with again here in Roger Mills County. But again, out here on I-40, this is a severe storm here as well. And there is an opportunity out here at least for some golf ball size hail uh, near the Eric area. So from Texola to Eric, uh, again, uh, there is at least an opportunity again for some hail there, possibly up to the size of golf balls. Uh, now I can tell you, it looks like the Weather Service, they're going to go and let this tornado warning here around the Moorwood area expire. They're going to let that one expire for right now. Uh, but again, we're going to keep our eyes on this. It's still got a tight area of spin. And again, it's still tracking towards the Moorwood area. So again, right now, again, just based off of what we're seeing here from the Weather Service, they're going to go and let the warning expire. Uh, and as we're looking at your video, Kathy, I know you've got it centered back up. You're there in the Hammond area just south of the area of spin. Uh, again, from your vantage point in the field, I'm trying to look at it here through a TV, but from your vantage point in the field, uh, give us another update on, uh, again, if there is a wall cloud, if there is a lowering, again, what you're seeing with this mesocyclone. Uh, well, we're, again, we're uh, back uh, east of the cell. We're, we're out of the line of fire for now for the hail core, but um, we're looking west right now on Highway 33. Um, we're east of Hammond. Um, you can see, uh, again, that that big shelf cloud indicating that the, the hail core is still um, moving very quickly off to the east. Um, right now we're seeing some lowering off to the right side of the shot here, um, but again, it's not a funnel cloud as of yet, but we are seeing that rotation, uh, which indicates that there still might be some, some chance of a, of a tornado drop in here, Will. Okay, okay, really appreciate that update. Uh, well, we got some video coming in from Mike Russ on that other storm to the north. We're gonna go back and check in. Uh, as soon as we're able to get him on the live line, uh, we'll be checking back in with Mike. And again, we do uh, continue still with a tornado warning on this cell up here, even though this is really raggedy uh, looking right now. But again, up here in Northern uh, Ellis County, uh, again, a tornado warning does continue up here. We'll take a different uh, perspective of this. And again, we've got some video from Mike. If we can, let's go and get that punched up and it may have just frozen. Uh, but again, officially there is a tornado warning up here. Again, just north of Shattuck, Gage, Fargo, Fort Supply area. Uh, we've had a tornado warning up here for almost 45 minutes. Uh, there was some brief tornadic activity north of Shattuck. Uh, however, right now there's no necessarily defined area of spin. Uh, with this uh, storm. So there's a broad mesocyclone here, uh, but again, no necessarily defined area of spin. So we're going to continue to track that. But again, officially from the Weather Service, they are continuing um, that tornado warning up here. So let's go back down here to the south and we'll just kind of walk through these additional cells. Uh, the cell here in the Moorwood area and the Hammond area that Kathy's looking at, it's trying to kind of elongate again. It's becoming a little bit longer. And a lot of times when that happens, a lot of times the tornado potential will ease down. So again, that's what we're seeing at least right now immediately with this storm. Uh, we'll continue to track that. And then also back down here towards the Eric area, severe thunderstorm warning here as well. And again, there's an opportunity for some golf ball size hail again down here uh, in the Eric area. So we're tracking that storm and again that continues to track off to the east at right around 30 miles per hour almost essentially right down I-40 so Sayre, Carter all the way back over through Retrop again heads up we're talking about Beckham County here highway 283 to the south there too again severe thunderstorm warning also again continues down there uh, the strongest storm in the state to me still looks like right here around the Moorwood area and again we've got Mike's video we're going to take another look at it coming up again here in a minute but again, as we zoom back in here, this was the storm that was tornado warned. Uh, this is still the video that we're looking at, uh, Kathy's video, our field meteorologist here. And, you know, we just can't stress this enough. This has still got a large hail core. And again, it, it's really coming right on into the Moorwood area right now. The reds, purples, whites, and grays you're seeing there on the hail core tracker. Uh, we just can't underscore that enough. That is some damaging hail. It could be as large as tennis balls. Uh, we've still got, it's a broad area spin. It's nowhere near as tight. But again, the storm is still spinning. And again, that's one of the reasons why um, we've got this hail core. But even, you can look even at reflectivity. A lot of times we look at the uh, velocities, the red and green product, or we look at our spin rate product, but even looking at, at reflectivity here, just base radar, you can actually see the area of spin. You can actually see how this storm, see the color coding here, how it spins around almost into a comma. That's the mesocyclone. That's where the mesocyclone, where we had the tornado warning just minutes ago was. Uh, but that's the reason why the hail is so big. These mesocyclones, they suspend the hail. They get bigger and bigger until it finally falls down. You can almost even see a little comma 
right here within the storm. See that? That's the area of spin. It's almost like a little centrifuge. See how that it's almost almost creating like a little donut hole there, but that's the comma shape coming around and that's the area of spin. So this is still a strong mesocyclone. Big hail continues to be quite likely as we're talking about, unfortunately, right there for Moorwood. Could be tennis ball size hail moving through the Moorwood area right now. But again, even the radar base uh, reflectivity presentation, again, quite impressive again with this storm. Kathy, you're still looking at it. I just want to check in with you one more time on this. Um, it looks like the immediate tornado threat's easing down with this one, but as you're looking at it out there in the field, give us an update. Hey, well, we're still seeing uh, the storm moving east. Uh, currently, it's no longer tornado warned, but it does still have that severe thunderstorm warning on it for that um, extreme hail threat that's going on right now. We are still seeing um, the the ominous kind of green color that's signaling that it does still have that hail threat uh, associated with it. Um, but again, it's taken on another, it's taken on that linear shape like it did uh, about an hour ago. Um, so, but from the way the storm has gone, it could cycle back to, to rotating. So we're going to keep an eye on it. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, this storm, it's still, it's a broad rotation. It's nowhere near as tight as it was. But even looking at the hail core tracker, you can see the curvature, how the storm is literally wrapping the hail core in on itself. Uh, so again, this, this whole storm here is rotating. Uh, there's a lot of curvature to it. Um, so again, even though the tornado warning right now has been allowed to expire, uh, let's really keep our eyes on this one for sure. It's still got a big hail core. Unfortunately, it's going through the Moorwood area right now. Uh, but again, we really got to keep our eyes on that one. Um, I want to come back up here to the north um, as well. And again, that's where we, we still continue to have this tornado warning up here. Um, so from Fort Supply to Fargo to north of Shattuck, uh, again, tornado warning um, here still. And again, this is a storm that did produce some tornadic activity north of Shattuck. And again, it just no longer appears on radar to be that well organized. Uh, there is areas of uh, locally heavy rain and hail that are quite likely here. In fact, up here in Harmon County, uh, up here in uh, uh, Harper County, rather, up here around the Selman area in Highway 64, you can see a fairly pronounced hail core. This is up here by the Oklahoma-Kansas border. The dark black line you're seeing there, that is the Oklahoma-Kansas border. Uh, so there's a fairly small compact hail core here from Selman up to Highway 64, where we could have some ping pong ball size hail here. Uh, but again, as far as at least the immediate tornado threat goes, uh, it looks like this activity, again, in northwestern Oklahoma, appears to be a weakening down. Lots of locally heavy rain. There's hail cores up here. Uh, there's a broad area of spin. Uh, but again, to me, still the strongest storm in the state still appears to be uh, this one that's currently moving through the Moorwood area, the one that we currently have the video of. Um, and again, that opportunity for possibly still some tennis ball size hell, especially where you're seeing the pinks and the whites. And again, that is eventually, essentially right now, moving through uh, the Moorwood area. So what I want to do, I want to zoom out the radar. And again, I want to give an overview. So again, depending on what part of the state you're in, uh, there's either active weather or there's not much going on. If you live in central Oklahoma, it's a fairly quiet weather evening. Southern Oklahoma, we're still monitoring for the opportunity of some severe weather down there. Uh, Western Oklahoma, completely different. As expected, these storms have been quite severe. Supercell activity. Uh, we've had at least one confirmed tornado in Oklahoma. Uh, there's been at least three confirmed tornadoes in the Texas Panhandle. It's been hopscotch tornadic activity again as we've gone through the evening and again we still continue with multiple severe thunderstorm warnings and officially still one tornado warning up there in Ellis County. I believe we've got Mike Russ back on the live line. I know he's up there in Ellis County. Uh, he's been looking at uh, this uh, tornado warn storm. Mike, you're still on the live line. Let's go and pop your video up. Uh, tell us where you are now and uh, go ahead and give us an update. Yes, William. I'm coming into the town of Fargo right now and at this moment, uh, I can tell you, I've traveled through some very heavy rainfall. Uh, I know in, in the, when I came through Cheyenne, there was a quarter size hail for sure in Cheyenne uh, and definitely some gusty wind. Now that I'm on the south side of the system up here, uh, so far, all I'm seeing is rain at this moment and frequent cloud to ground lightning at this time, William. Yeah, no, absolutely, Mike. And the, the, the tornado warning officially still continues up there. Uh, I mean, it's looking more and more disorganized on radar. Uh, I mean, what are you seeing? I mean, from your vantage point up there, as you're eyeballing it now in real time, again, you're up there in Fargo. 
Uh, I mean, what what are you seeing uh, in real time? I mean, on radar again. Uh, the, and by the way, the tornado warning has just now been allowed to expire, so that is no longer a tornado warning storm. That was warned for about an hour. Uh, there was a time north of Shattuck uh, when we did have tornadic activity. After that, that storm to me it really looked like it weakened. Even though we did continue that tornado warning for at least an additional 30 minutes. Um, but you're up there, you're eyeballing it. I mean, kind of give us an update. Also, as you were driving through the area, there was an opportunity for some tornadic activity. Was there anything you saw, again, when you were up there? Uh, no, William, I didn't see anything. Uh, I didn't see any wall clouds or anything like that as I was, as I was coming north here. Uh, I can tell you if there is anything, I believe the storm has gone uh, a little more high precip than uh, we, we originally thought here. And this storm right now, I'm not, I'm not able to see much in it at this time because of all the heavy precipitation. Yeah, that's what it looks like there. But I mean, no damage, no debris or anything like that. Again, we did have a report of uh, three miles north of Shattuck, a little bit of debris from a possible spin up. Um, that was about an hour ago. But again, as you've kind of been out and about almost essentially through that same area, again, have you seen any debris or anything else to kind of add to that report? I have not, William, uh, personally here. Uh, I'm still tracking into it and into a uh, where that tornado warning was. So if I see anything, uh, there's a, you know, a likelihood or a uh, chance, I should say chance, of uh, seeing uh, the potential for damage up here just a few miles ahead of me. But again, at this time, I, I, it's just a very, uh, very heavy rainfall event up here that I'm seeing at this time. That, that's the, and that's the way it looks here on radar too, Mike. I mean, it looks like for the most part, this storm, I mean, it's really, again, it, we, we kind of saw that weakening trend ongoing, uh, you know, for quite some time, really over about the last 30 minutes. There's still a fairly vigorous hail core just for the folks to know up here around Highway 64. That's going to be approaching the Oklahoma-Kansas border here fairly quickly. Uh, but again, there is still a fairly vigorous hail core there uh, where you're seeing the blacks on radar. There's still at least an opportunity uh, for some golf ball size hail. In fact, in fact, that's essentially right now over Highway 64. But again, that's up there in far northwestern Oklahoma. That will essentially, over the next 30 minutes, be pushing up towards the Oklahoma-Kansas border. Outside of that, lots of locally heavy rain, vivid lightning. These have been tough storms up here, again, at least with some intermittent tornadic activity, again, just north of Shattuck. I want to go back down here to the south now as well, and I want to get another update on this storm that just moved through the Moorwood area. This was the other storm that was tornado warned. Uh, we did not confirm any tornadic activity with this storm. It's looking a little more outflow dominant now. The winds on this storm, the outbound winds, uh, according to radar, they're kind of gusting up a little bit, especially at the lower levels. Uh, but again, that doesn't always mean anything. Like I said, these storms will cycle up and cycle down. And even though we do have more in the way of outbound wind now, uh, we'll just have to see what this storm entails. It is a little more elongated. You can see the storm itself is just a little bit longer in length. And again, from time to time, that will also mean uh, that there is a bit of a weakening trend with the storm as well. But Kathy, your eyes are on it. Let's go and get Kathy's video punched back up here. And uh, Kathy, as you're looking at it from your vantage point, also go ahead and give us an update. Well, I'm in the east, uh, currently on Highway 33. Um, we just uh, went through Butler, again, heading east. Um, the, as you said, the, the storms are taking on another form of, uh, they're, they're looking a lot more linear. Um, again, we're not seeing that rotation uh, on the velocity map anymore as they are taking on that linear shape, but we still have that, that hail threat. We're not seeing that hail core as well defined. Um, the outflow is, it's kind of blowing us around the road a little bit, so it does appear to be weakening, but again, it could cycle back up as it, as it has before, so we're still keeping an eye on it. Yeah, really appreciate that update, Kathy. And what I want to do real quick, I, we've also got Eric Hobbs. He's been on the live line with us essentially all evening. He's been watching southern Oklahoma, especially down around the Ardmore area, for any signs of development. There was an opportunity for storms to develop down there uh, as we went through the late afternoon and early evening. Eric, I know you're on the live line. I want to get to you here as well. We'll, we'll take a look at your video momentarily. But also for the folks at home, give us an update. What's going on down in southern Oklahoma uh, now as we're going on just past 6 p.m.? And if we still have Eric on the live line, we maybe we maybe have lost him. I, I believe he's still on the live line, though. Eric, if you're still there. Okay, well, we'll check back in with Eric uh, coming up here just a little bit later on. Uh, let's do this. Let's kind of do an overview here uh, real quick and kind of see what's going on around the state. Let me go and zoom this out. 
And uh, again, you know, all the activity is currently in northwestern and western Oklahoma, south central Oklahoma. Uh, again, there's been an opportunity. There's a, there's a few echoes now across portions of north Texas uh, right down in here. So we'll keep our eye on that, see what that entails for south central Oklahoma. Uh, again, outside of it, everything has essentially been along the cold front in western and northwestern Oklahoma. And again, these storms have definitely packed a punch. And again, they've definitely meant business again as we've gone through the evening again with an opportunity for at least one tornado and at least uh, three tornado warnings one storm tornado warned uh, at least twice uh, so we're still looking at Kathy's video there again that's coming in out there around the Moorwood area let's go up to the north I want to get just one more update here from Mike again he's up there in northwestern Oklahoma and uh, again this is kind of the area where we had the kind of the extended tornado warning up here in the uh, Ellis, Woodward, and kind of the Harper County area. Uh, but Mike, you're on the live line. Also, go ahead and give us an update. Yes, William. Uh, here shortly, I'll be coming into the Woodward area. <coughs> Excuse me. I can tell you, uh, again, what I'm seeing up here uh, is just a lot of heavy rainfall, a lot of lightning up here, uh, a lot of cloud to ground, a lot of cloud to cloud, uh, and at times, very heavy rainfall. Uh, but again, at this time, I'm just not seeing a lot up here in the Woodward area. Uh, I just my north there are some uh, there are severe thunderstorms that are going to be moving into Kansas. Uh, but at this time in the Woodward area, I don't see anything at this time other than just the heavy rainfall and the lightning threat. At, again, at this time. Right, right, absolutely. And, and that's pretty much what we're confirming here on radar as well. Looks like the overall trend here it is easing down, uh, again, even here on radar as well. So, again, that is good news. Again, we had that extended tornado warning up there. Uh, you know, again, we did at least have one tornado north of Shattuck. And again, there was a little bit of damage reported there. Uh, there was an opportunity kind of in the more rural areas north of Shattuck that we could have still had some tornadic activity. It was a cone-shaped funnel uh, there just north of Shattuck. Now, we did also have the tornado warning uh, back down here around the Hammond area. And that one, I'm telling you, uh, it really looked a little more impressive uh, at the time. Now, that storm is weakening. It's elongating and not looking anywhere near uh, as impressive as it was uh, maybe uh, 30 minutes ago when we were covering this. Uh, but Kathy, you're still down there. We're even seeing some clearing skies there in your shot. Uh, but give us another update down here around the Moorwood area as well. Hi, right, well, we're still heading uh, east. We're coming up on Highway 138, um, where we're going to try to head north and get a shot of the hail core. That's, it's still pretty pronounced with the storm on the northern edge, but like you said, the storm is taking on a linear shape, so we are seeing a bit of a weakening, but that hail threat is still there on the northern side. Um, it should be moving in, um, crossing about Highway 138. Uh, it's looking like a little after 630, so uh, we're going to be keeping that as well. Appreciate that update there, Kathy. Uh, so here's what we're going to do, folks. Uh, we've obviously kind of been covering this, kind of extended now for probably about an hour and a half or a little bit longer. Uh, there's a little bit of a lull in the action here. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to give our team of storm trackers an opportunity to take a quick break as well. And we'll have another live update here in just about 10 minutes or less, or unless conditions warrant. Otherwise, keep it here with Oklahoma Weather Tracker TV. We'll keep you up to date with the latest live weather information for Oklahoma.